Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have Ambassador Bhadra Kumar and we are going to discuss the latest developments in Kartarpur, Pakistan relations, Afghanistan, which somehow is the complex of relations we have in, with Pakistan for a long time. Kartarpur, one of the Pakistani ministers have called it a googly. And if we remember when Sidhu went and asked for this Kartarpur uh, corridor, he was trolled big time by the BJP. Now it seems that it, the Googly has really been effective and the BJP has now is, uh, is basically owning up to Kartarpur. You have asked the question, you have answered it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that is the situation. You know, here uh, we took the stance that no engagement with Pakistan of any kind unless terrorism is solved. Now, I'll have to go back a little bit to JNK. Really, there is sophistry in the argument because uh, Pakistan is not doing very much in JNK nowadays. It's you actually know? so much of a homegrown insurgency yes. that 14 year old boys are picked up, yes. the are getting killed. Yes. This is unbelievable. Yes, exactly. That's why I use the word sophistry. Um, they don't want to engage, they means the government, and I'm violently opposed to that. They don't want to engage and they have to find some conceivable reason for not doing that. You see, it all began when the Hurriyat wanted to come and meet the Pakistani High Commissioner. That's right. That's when the talks broke off. Talks broke off. And now we are promoting a meeting between Hurriyat and the Norwegian form of our Prime Minister. He visits them and talks to them and he is a, he's a, a credible, well-known figure in international mediation. Now we've swung to that extent. So you see this whole thing has fallen flat. The, we've lost the plot in regard of the relations with Pakistan after raising such high hopes, inviting Mr. Nawaz Sharif to come here. The so all, politics yes, at that so all we could do was to um, <clears throat> keep on saying this, that you know, un, so long as terrorism continues, and as I said, terrorism is no longer an issue in that sense we will not engage Pakistan. Now the point is, the initiative by Pakistan has compelled us to hold an emergency meeting of the cabinet. This is Kartarpur. Kartarpur. And agree to go ahead with Pakistan on that. We have entered into a constructive engagement with Pakistan. We have not used that expression, but that's what has happened. But the position is, that we will not engage Pakistan. And then what happened is, this is uh, such an emotive issue, uh, since it is uh, linked to the great legacy and memory of Guru Nanak, and uh, a, an important anniversary is coming. The ruling elite cannot dissociate itself from that. Now, just let me interrupt you for a minute on mm -hmm. this. If we remember that Kartarpur was not on the anvil mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. and government, or at least the BJP, was openly trolling Sidhu on that. Mm -hmm. Why has it, why when you say it's an emotive issue and so on, why is it become imperative for the BJP government mm -hmm. to really go and it sort, it sort of changed its position from its earlier stand, no truck with Pakistan till terrorism stops. And then why did they have to, as you said, call a midnight cabinet meeting to change its position? Uh, after Sidhu's first visit, no one expected a forward moment on this. Okay. And then came, a decision was handed down to Delhi by Pakistan. And on a decision of that kind, I don't think anybody would have the political courage here in the present dispensation to say, no, we will not cooperate. As I said, this is linked to a very precious memory, a very precious legacy, and for a very important subnationality in India. It's very difficult to say, no, you have to associate. And look at it, how we associate it. The, uh, in a, an environment which is very tendentious or competitive in India today in the domestic politics, this was a bipartisan thing. 
Congress party, in this BJP. Climate. And now, uh, not only that there is a symbolic uh, representation from the union government, it could have been uh, Akali representative for a symbolic uh, thing. No, BJP also didn't want to be seen as out of it because Sidhu was going from there and therefore it also nominated a Sikh minister to go to claim the legacy for itself, to get a little bit of, this, of the shine. So I think uh, uh, the, uh, the really speaking, we were clean bowled <laughs> by the Google Google, again. You know, by the okay. Google, yeah. Let's also, you have been in uh, diplom diplomacy for a very long time. This kind of one-sided gesture without preparation, without talking to the other side, is quite unusual in international diplomacy, isn't it? Normally they come out of an engagement rather than before the engagement. You see, the, the thing with Pakistan is, frankly, um, if there is a political will, uh, you can go on a very long journey and you can go very far. Today? You know? uh, today, anytime. Anytime. Because uh, I've written this also, because it's a paradox that this is a terribly popular topic for the Indian public opinion, a good relationship with Pakistan. And that happens to be the case in Pakistan also. Take a journey there, Prabir, and you go to a shop, you go to a restaurant, order a meal. I've lived in that country, that's why I'm telling you. If when they know that you are an Indian, they refuse to accept money. It's, it's more than in India. Like, you know, I've experienced this, my wife going and stitching a salwar kameez, and then the tailor says, oh, Madam, how can we take money? You're from India. <laughs> you know, this is a kind of, it's a very that's, popular that's quite true. Uh, thing. So, Pakistan, preparations, enormous, yeah, preparations, yeah. Public yeah. goodwill and Will is there. also in Punjab, the yes. Punjabiyat, yes. the two Punjab should come you know, together, yes, exchange, yes. you know, experiences. Now, All you see, this there. is where we should really <coughs> discuss a little bit about the, uh, the I mentioned, you know, the, uh, the, the, the futility of uh, sticking to the old stereotyped narrative, you know. Uh, because I closely, I read uh, Pakistani press every day. You know, I mean, it's, a, it's almost like reading Indian newspapers. Every single day, Iranian press, Pakistani press. I read it for decades altogether, and it's a habit. Now, you could see that, you know, that uh, there have been very meaningful signals from the Pakistani military. Of course, as far as the Pakistani political elite is concerned, India is no longer a contentious issue there. No one is fighting any election or any bipole with India as a topic, you know. I mean, we look so immature here that even major uh, political party like BJP and uh, tall leaders drag Pakistan into, you know, the Indian elections. You'd be you surprised know? after the, this, shall we say, a small semi-final, if you will, mm -hmm. to the general elections mm -hmm. in the five states, the, they were senior BJP leaders tweeting that this is a victory for Pakistan. Mm. So anything that happens yes, in India, BJP doesn't yeah, win, yeah, yeah, yeah. apparently it's Pakistan. You see, the wins. thing is, the, the, uh, the discourse in Pakistan, uh, you see, that's why I'm saying that the changes that have taken place there, you know, that Pakistan is on a very different uh, level now, you know. Their uh, discourses are not about India. And I don't think the discourses are so much even about Kashmir or anything like that. The discourses are about uh, they are not missing an opportunity, the chance of a lifetime they have to optimally make use of their uh, geography, uh, uh, their um, immense uh, untapped resources with this huge investment taking place from China and the uh, primacy that is attached to Pakistani policies by the international community as evident from the U-turn that President Trump, Trump took. Has taken. I mean, it's a telling example of that, and everyone is wanting to have relationship. The colossal failure of our policy to isolate Pakistan, which was, we now realize it is completely unrealistic and a futile effort to do that. So you see, they are on a very different journey now, you know, and um, I don't think uh, we should have missed it when the first signals came six months or one year back from the Pakistani military general, from the army chief, seeking reconciliation with India, you know. And I thought at that time that uh, 
without acknowledgement some meaningful back channel conversation would have begun you know now we are today talking where imran khan is openly calling the uh, attack in mumbai as an act of terrorism and saying that pakistan has to get to the bottom of it because it's terribly important for the relationship also and he called it actually used the word terrorism yes. Then he says that you know that there are things you know where they are mulling over two or three ideas are in the air to discuss about Kashmir, and he said it's a little premature now to say that. And then he uh, speaks about his meeting with Atal Bihari Bajpayee. All this after in the in and around the Qatar port corridor uh, uh, situation, you know, when the Indian journalists were there, they said about this conversation with Bajpayee. where it was again mentioned about you know solution for kashmir possible so i think he just top short of uh, saying that uh, he has an open mind and he is willing to pick up the threats where manmohan singh government uh, left them now you know you made a specific point i think that's very very important for our audience that pakistan changing from a perhaps a more india centric policy earlier to a much larger engagement and the economic corridor with china and the economic uh, possibility of growth engagement with the global economy all of this is the as basically the critical elements have changed pakistan's internal politics mm -hmm. in this regard do you think afghanistan could in that yeah, sense yeah, yeah. and baluchistan both of the yes, problems of we, pakistan yes we absolutely you are very right you know the um, succinctly very succinctly uh, this transition in pakistan can be described in one sentence it's a transition from a, the complex of a national security state to one of regional integration now it's a it's a it's a historic transition in that sense and uh, you know um, they have uh, fairly successfully they have tackled the internal security challenges and um, uh, it's quite evident now that the americans have been defeated in afghanistan and it's not a question of any longer salvaging the war it's a question of uh, um, pulling out of it without much humiliation you know it's at, a, at the moment 65% of the territory is under taliban it's taliban gone control. and i think uh, fairly uh, at all levels there is an awareness that this is a hopeless situation and you know the the thing is the afghan army which is doing the fighting is losing more men than it is able to recruit now Okay, so, so it's, a, it's it's just it's about a, sums up the security situation, the, the hopelessness of it, and um, uh, even if they commit now ten times the percent strength, the Americans for which they don't, nobody will take the political decision in Washington. Even if they do that, the the tide cannot be stemmed. Now the point is, the south and the east of Afghanistan have been practically lost. and uh, all that can be said as outside the pale of influence of the taliban are really the northern and the westernmost part bordering iran westernmost parts and the northernmost parts are also not uh, too Pashto. close to sunni yeah, yeah, yeah. they are not pashto they are not pashto areas hazaras yeah. and others now they, are, they are the closer to iran yes, than they are yes, to yes, the taliban yes so you quite clearly now the uh, the the trump's letter which i mentioned earlier and so on it shows the desperation you know to pull out and uh, the great fear is now thanksgiving season that week itself four american soldiers were killed you know and uh, one person who was serving there was this utah mayor you know if we are mayor of utah you know he had to come you know because of the uh, obligations as a reserve uh, serviceman and so on came and he got killed you know now you see the thing is uh, trump definitely will not want to carry this cross when he goes for the election so um when you come to the geopolitics of it uh, you know it's easier to invade afghanistan than to withdraw history shows it you know the, the anglo anglo, anglo war onward you know that is very difficult terrain 
Now, we do not realize that the supply lines for the NATO forces and the American forces are all through Pakistan. Still. Otherwise, they have to be through Russia, and it's not exactly in friendly is, terms either. Uh, it's not uh, friendly terms either, and it is exorbitantly expensive also. And now, Pakistanis are not charging anything for this. You know, it's almost gratis. You, we, are, we are overlooking the role that Pakistan has in the Afghan situation today. And an orderly withdrawal from Afghanistan would be impossible without even the cooperation of Pakistan. So this is but the situation. Do you see the rise of Taliban again in, in Afghanistan? as a threat again to the nation state of Pakistan? No, I don't think so. You know, the, uh, we can maybe have one full session later on Afghanistan because it's a profound topic. Eh? But uh, suffice to say that uh, the Taliban, in my understanding, I have dealt with them, the Taliban, in my understanding, actually belongs to this traditional Islam. Not to they the Tehrik Taliban, no, which is operating no, in Pakistan. No, and all, uh, or not to this uh, variety, Al Qaeda, Islamic State, and which all comes that. really from yeah. Saudi Wahhabi yes, Islam. Yes. In other words, they are not part of the global jihadi movement. They are actually Afghan-centric nationalists, and uh, you see the, despite the provocations from the Indian side in interfering in the civil war in these years. Uh, since mid-1990s, uh, they have not really mounted any attack on India, you know, the, in, in, in India. And uh, the attacks on the mission, etc., is something which is not only directed against India. You know, missions have been attacked and others have been attacked and so on in the overall anarchic conditions. But That's, they haven't gone uh, like so. I am let's saying take a step back from Afghanistan. As you yeah, said, but I am saying that later. therefore, just to sum up this point, you know, I, we must discuss separately um, at this point that uh, I have never believed that uh, the Taliban have an agenda uh, on uh, toward regional security of regime change in Central Asia, of injecting jihad virus into India. No, not even into Pakistan. Not even into, into Pakistan. Pakistan. So you are. Contention or your understanding is that the Tehreek e Taliban growth in Pakistan is yes. much more homegrown. Yes. And it's more the internal problems of Pakistan with the Pakistan yeah. government. Inevitably, as you know, others, uh, foreign powers dabbled in it. You know, you know that. You know, in the sense that the uh, time and again Pakistan gave precise information to the Americans as to where the notorious fellows were living. But Americans never did took any action. Till lately, they have been compelled to, because Pakistan started non-cooperating itself. Similarly, they got patronage from uh, Kabul, from the security establishment. And, you know, the perception grew that, you know, that there might have been an Indian element also, because the security establishment in Kabul has a back-to-back -back deal with the security establishment in Delhi. And the way intelligence agencies work, you know, uh, enemies, enemies, your friend, how that kind of thing reprehensible the mind. So this lent uh, credibility to the Pakistani propaganda, you know. And I really can't say to what extent there is an element of truth in it, and we can't. Pass it. So, without getting into the murky details, which are not available to us in any case, what you were saying is Pakistan is at a crossroad, and both the military and the civilian administration under Imran Khan. Mm -hmm are looking to a different kind of engagement. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this is a historic moment mm -hmm. if India is willing to seize the initiative. Yeah, you know, this uh, transition I mentioned towards regional uh, integration, this also means that, you know, that, you know, the, uh, when you look at it on the Pakistani side, there is also a lot of admiration, even though we run down, you know, our own performance ourselves, and we are never fully satisfied with what we are doing, and we say it's all fudging statistics and all that. But when you look at it from outside, they think, you know, that we have uh, done in the last 10 years or 15 years, we have uh, done remarkably well. Hmm? Uh, let us look at it, how the Pakistanis are seeing India. Uh, they f have a problem with the peasant setup in the sense that, you know, the peasant setup, the ruling elite, BJP, and the forces which mentor it, the Hindu fundamentalist groups and so on, um, they are perceived as anti-Pakistan, anti-Muslim. And uh, therefore, uh, the sincerity of purpose of the peasant leadership 
there is a question mark about it in the Pakistani press. The question is therefore having for four years, nine months, made Pakistan the key enemy mm -hmm. and Kashmir as the major flag for, mm -hmm. shall we say, rousing nationalism in the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. That's what really it was doing. Mm -hmm. Whether now they can reverse that mm -hmm. and say we are now the statesmen, we are going to reap the benefit of a hard political stand and Pakistan is now coming to us and therefore let us, you know, our strategy has succeeded, could be a possible uh, turn that the Modi government could take. That's to be the, that's I, the real question. I had asking. thought that uh, Prime Minister Modi goofed up. He had a good opportunity uh, when Imran Khan was elected to really open to that up. really open it up. And uh, uh, to be frank with you, uh, as an observer of uh, Modi's uh, style of politicking, uh, I thought you know with his uh, panache for photo ops and grandstanding and so on as uh, diplomacy. Uh, I thought, you know, that he would uh, build it up towards the end of this year to a SARC summit, uh, facilitating a triumphant visit to Pakistan. Their calculation now, was to use Kashmir and Pakistan. That's what I'm relations. saying. Now the point is, uh, the, the, if uh, they had been imaginative enough, there was much to be scored out of a thing like that. Peace rather than war. Peace rather than war. Now, even former army people, generals, uh, have uh, written that the surgical strikes are a joke, that it had yeah. no effect. <laughs> now, the point is, the nobody believes. Number of, you know, killings on both sides, yeah. both of militants yeah. and Indian army yeah. security forces yeah. have risen in the last four years. Now, you see, the point is, the, uh, the, your kind of thing which you mentioned that the government can brag that they brought Pakistan down to their knees, there is no empirical evidence showing that. And that Pakistanis are not down on their knees. My, by God, I can tell you, they are not really begging us anything, you know. No, they, I, they want engagement. I am quite but, a complete yeah. in agreement with you. Yeah. But, you know, bragging rights are in Facebook and WhatsApp. Mm. And let's not forget that. Mm. The second point I want to ask you, this is really my question. Do you think Pakistan will engage at this point with the name the government? And suppose it loses, then they have to start afresh. So will they do that or they will sort of say, okay, let's talk, let's talk, but really not lead to a solution till the elections take place? You see, the uh, you are looking at it in terms of the Pakistani strategy. I think the Pakistani strategy would be to see that uh, the atmosphere, the conditions are ripe for an engagement when a new government with okay. a fresh mandate comes to power in Delhi. So uh, they will have to manage between now and that point. And I think from the way they are doing, they, are do, they will do it with a constructive spirit. They are not going to uh, wish it the atmosphere and bring matters to a kind of a big stalemate or impasse at that time. You know, they would rather gain out of uh, a good climate building up. Take Kartarpur. Uh, now, we had a certain kind of bipolarity in India that uh, when uh, BJP is in power, Congress would snipe at BJP. When uh, BJP is outside, it would snipe at Manmohan Singh. We saw that when it comes to Pakistan because there's always consolidation of voters, you know, this is useful. But now the point is that's not going to be possible because on Kartarpur, Everybody everyone is on the same page. So I have a feeling that it is a brilliant move by Pakistan even to bring about a consensus, national consensus within India about engaging Pakistan. Pakistan. Secondly, as I mentioned earlier, they have, uh, uh, to what ext whatever extent they might have been involved in the valley, they are no longer doing it. And there is open admission by knowledgeable people who feel the pulse in the valley and who are terribly experienced like Mr. Dulat. For Dongi's years, you know, he dealt only with this subject. And if he says that he sees no Pakistani uh, hand any longer there in Kashmir, nor the Kashmiri people hankering for, you know, a union with Pakistan, then 
it's quite clear that you know that there is a, if if at all there was a Pakistani interference that is not there today, and then this Katapur initiative, you know uh, this one, then day before yesterday, in the National Assembly, Pakistani Foreign Minister Qureshi made a statement. I don't know Indian press reported it, but it was a major statement he made. He has sought cooperation from India in Afghanistan. That's a big step. That's a complete change. It's a big change, you know. And why did he say that? He said Pakistan recognizes India's influence in Afghanistan and therefore India's cooperation is useful for Pakistan. So I think... You see the changes that have happened, huh? So let's hope that these mm. changes that are happening, mm -hmm. both in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, the economic corridor, Baluchistan, all of this take the subcontinent, South Asia, in a better direction, because I think we are all waiting for that. You know, the, the, the point is, this is, we have discussed the positive uh, things, but uh, equally there is also the negative things. Like, you know, we both agree that on the economic side, you know, there isn't much to be done now. Uh, by this government that will make a change in the political climate. Uh, I am afraid that uh, other things may happen. You know, I hope they are known because as a patriot, as an Indian, a law-abiding citizen, it's the last thing you want. But you know the kind of thing that happened in Bulanshar, it really yes. gives you a creepy feeling as to, you know, when uh, faced with the specter of a defeat, of the kind that, uh, you know, on the 11th, you know, we saw, um, anything may happen, you know. One shudders to think what all can happen. Now, if that kind of a thing happens, then, Then, of course, all the bits are Then off. all the bits are off. But then, otherwise, we have hope. Then the thing is, always there is this problem of uh, interest groups, you know. You know, uh, Prabir, unless uh, you are of an extraordinarily high level of erudition, uh, you don't admit mistakes. Of course. You know, and uh, uh, because you must be a very enlightened person to admit that you can make mistakes, you know. And then here the point is, there is also a gravy train running, you know. And again, as part of the establishment, I have seen it. Uh, how uh, well looked after these people who are involved in this business of uh, the insurgency fighting and so on in Pakistan. So um, they are stakeholders in a certain way. And uh, you already saw in the downstream of the Kartapur corridor the old narrative being uh, rehashed and reproduced again that Imran Khan is uh, not a free agent that he's a progeny of the military and so on. In that case, earlier time, the narrative was that uh, what is the point in dealing with Nawaz Sharif because he doesn't get along with the military. <laughs> now the point is the complaint is they get along like a house on fire. You know, so I don't know where damned the problem you is. Are, yeah, yeah. You are not. So you see, there the thing is you're, you're unable to change out of that narrative. Yeah, you become, you are entrapped in it, you are a captive. And now um, there must be, therefore, a strong political leadership uh, with a certain sense of direction, which Manmohan Singh had. That kind of a leadership with a sense of direction is necessary. Considering that, if for some reason it is the same ruling elite which is going to run India for another five years after the next uh, 2019 poll, well, you know, you must understand that the correlation of forces remain the same. It is the same forces, same groups, uh, you know, the fundamentalist groups which would be mentoring this ruling elite. And uh, probably if that were to happen, then you will see, you know, a surge even in that direction. So you see, this, there are therefore, you know, um, uh, there is a, one can only be at best cautiously optimistic. There are very many negative factors also. Thank you very much, Ambassador Bhadra Kumar. This is all the time we have for today on this, in discussing this issue. Cautiously optimistic, hope yet, but problems also on the horizon. Thank you very much. Please keep watching News Click. We'll come back to you with this and other editions of our news.